That's 431. Uh, do you want to start with preliminary comments? This is Mary Ramirez, your recording clerk. This is a joint workshop of September 12, 2023. It's being held with a quorum of City of Westlake Council physically in attendance at the Westlake Council Chambers at 4005 Seminole Pratt Whitney Road. Public comments may be accepted utilizing the electronic comment card available on the city's website. Public comments are permitted at the appropriate time. The mayor will call for such during public comment and you may participate utilizing the system's virtual hand feature and waiting to be acknowledged. Please note this meeting is being recorded, both voice and video, and to remember your mic may be live. I will mute any microphones that carry any feedback or interruptions. If you're a caller that has been muted, you may unmute yourself by pressing star six. Any person in the virtual meeting causing a disruption or being inappropriate will be removed. If I may also remind those physically in attendance, please utilize microphones so that the virtual audience and a clear recording of the meeting is produced. Thank you, Mayor O'Connor. Thank you, Madam Deputy Clerk. Let's go ahead, I'll call to order at 4.33 p.m. And uh, please take a roll call. For City of Westlake, Mayor John Paul O'Connor. Present. Vice Mayor Langowski. Present. Councilwoman Pilar Vallejon is not here. Councilman Julian Martinez is also not here. And Councilwoman Charlotte Leonard is running late. Uh, and roll call for uh, Summit Improvement District, uh, President Scott Massey, Vice President Zane Beard, Present. and Secretary Lilani Gebers. Able to please stand for the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for the Sands of the Nation, and justice for all. Yep. We have one item on the agenda. Post park discussion and update. Mr. Mayor, City Manager. Mr. Mayor, Council, and uh, Board of Supervisors from Seminole Improvement District, uh, Ken Castle, City Manager and District Manager. Um, you will recall from our last meeting, there were several uh, items that we talked about adding some pavilions, moving some, um, making sure we had enough pickleball courts, tot lots, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the district has gone back to Don Herring and staff. Uh, walk through some items. Basically, if you go to page the third of your page statement pages, it's more or less the latest revision of the design. Um, the first ones are colored, but the, the third page there, uh, concept 1.2a. If you'll notice on the center of the north side, we moved the stage from the north end of the field to the middle of the north side. Can you go to the third one? See it. Which one? The number three, third page. That one, yeah. Um, we <clears throat> we ended up looking at that because then we can also uh, launch fireworks from the, like the northwest corner and still have a drop zone area that's away from people. Plus, it takes the sound and pushes it to the east, away from the neighbors adjacent to us. Um, to give you some perspective. The fourth fest distance from where the stage was to Kingfisher was about 750 feet. Fourth, it was a little bit far. Could have been a little bit smaller, a little bit more. Um, dement, but this is about 750 from this area where we have to where the food trucks and, and uh, people would be as the other side. So it's about the same distance as we had this past 4th of July from the stage to the other area, which is a decent size. Um, the other was also about 500 feet wide. We can also get to 500 feet wide in here and still have parking and our drop zone and stuff. So we would have enough space to do pretty much duplicate what we've been doing for the right. Fest. Um, Could we, if we needed to get 
some food trucks up closer to the stage. Maybe we need some more incentive to like. What what we noticed at the last fourth fest is everyone was hanging coming towards the music because everybody was hanging out at the food. Right. Maybe, but we need to sprinkle in some <clears throat> some action up by the stage as well. One of the other items that could be done is one of the discussions that I had with Mr. Massey this afternoon. If you look over on the left end, we have open just north of the basketball courts and stuff like that. We were considering looking at potentially making sure that we had a transformer and some facilities over there that if you wanted to for a smaller event or right. shift the event, you could shift the stage to there, which would make it closer to the food trucks, okay. things like that. So one of the things that we've been internally discussing is how do we make this multifunction, multi-purpose where regardless of what you want to set up out there, you can do it relatively easy. Right. You know? So um, great. Thank you. But we do have the design in there for the top lot, the basketball courts, tennis courts, and stuff like that. And it is set up for um Shad, remind me if I'm correct. 20, 20 food trucks, right? You know, we have it, we have it laid out for 18 to 20 food trucks in the food truck lot area, which will give them a pedestal for power and for war. I just want to say for the record, mm -hmm. uh, Councilman Martinez is is here virtually online. So, okay. uh, so that's kind of where we are. And as you'll notice, uh, part of what your approval the other night was at the utility site for the tank. You'll notice that the landscape berm comes down the north side. Mm -hmm. So, as I was discussing the other night, that part of that north landscaping would all be as we're developing the park, we would be landscaping around the tank. Thoughts and comments on that, or I think 1.2B is um, there's a couple minor modifications on that on, on the path and where uh, some of the landscaping goes. But other than that, they're basically the same situation. And what this does at this point in time is allows SID with its engineers to start looking at what is a dollar value that we're going to need to be able to construct the park and then what. How much can we put into various pieces of the puzzle right. or phases? Um, is this this is just a general site plan, or is this very specific? And the reason I ask is this little top lot that's on the yes. the, the plans, the playgrounds. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important that aspects of that are covered. That's an issue that we're having now. Is that the the playground equipment just simply gets too hot. Dirt gets too hot. Everything gets too hot. The kids are literally burning themselves. Plus the um, the ones have some shade there. Not just the covered area for the parents to hang out, which does say covered porch here. I mean the physical top lot playground. There should be some kind of I I didn't shade bring I didn't stuff. bring the designs with me, but the couple that we've looked at that uh, Don's group has provided us all have shade sails okay. as part of the top lot. Scenario most on um, they're also um, accessible with shade trees. They run depending on the size. There's running somewhere between um, five fifty to one mil, depending on what you I, do. I just think that this, so that is all TBD, right? Yes. So this is just the general site. There's plan. a general site plan of yeah. location and stuff, so we, we know that, in on all that stuff. When we right, but then we can get prices of. How how large of a how large of a tot lot? How inclusive do we get it? But it allows you and others to go back either to the legislature or other grants and say, hey, we want to build this. How much can I get grant money? Can I get some funding for it? Can I get some assistance? Yeah, those shade sales are paramount. Yeah. Um, if you could get me what those those concept designs on the playground, I'd like to start looking at those. Yeah, we can send them over. Um, Mayor Connor, I do want to interrupt. Councilwoman Vallejeron is also on the line for discussion. Fantastic. Can you get this down to get everyone's same page? Is that for engineering? We're, we're going to have to make the entire site drain. So as long as we know we're going to be in this area with this, if that's yeah. good with everyone, that ball fields are coordinated with, able to change in there. 
if that overall concept is good, that Ryan, um, I think Ryan's on the line, he can put together a number we need, and we have some dollars to fill in the pond that's back here on the right. top end. Fill that, um, take care of the drainage out front, this drainage, and then possibly grade and drain the site. Hopefully, we'll have enough dollars to get that done, which is a big, a big deal. But we, we were just trying to get to this point, so we have something that we can put numbers to. I mean, I like the overall concept. I like the volleyball. I like the pickleball. We incorporated some basketball. That was definitely a, a constituent request from the public. Um, looks like you've even you've even anticipated some future racquetball and sand volleyball. Sand yeah, volleyball. I, I love the volleyball. I have a comment for the stage. Mm -hmm. Sure. Is that really the best location? We think of? people are standing here, just kind of like looking to the right, and it's not like no, they would be all over those fields in the sun. Yeah. Okay, so you know there's netting right here. So you that's the way the people sitting in front of that. Initially, initially that would be all open field. Yeah. Okay, that solves that. And so, the, so the backdrop nets we had that discussion. They'll how you doing? They will come. They'll be movable. So if we're having an event, that it's going to be okay. Be that's awesome. That's good. And that'll be that open area is going to be frisbee, run your dog, parking during events. You know that was kind of the, the concept with the big open area. It can be multi-purpose type open field for all kinds of things. But the parking would be more on that end and this side so that your people can gather up towards the stage. So they're standing over the fields. Yes. Yeah. Parking in the open area. Yes. Okay. Some, some, what we thought. What we did. Uh, similar to, to the fourth fest, we have the main area that's blocked between the stage about 500 feet mm -hmm. wide. It goes from the food trucks to the stage parking on one side. Now this side, the other side would be a drop zone, but we have parking out closer to the street, plus parking across the street at uh, right. Christ Fellowship and stuff. And even, I'm sure some are ready to help out if we need them to. Oh, they just want to be real convenient. That's what they're probably because it's fancy. See that go all the way around the world. And that's right. nice to put a hole through there. But we've talked about, you see the other open area in the middle on the left up there? Mm -hmm. That's where we were discussing is that if you were to have a smaller function going on stage facing that way yes sir um if, if, if we're going to have something smaller you could have some food trucks down there you the kids can be playing in the top lot area people can be doing things you can have like a small concert or small bands playing like a weekend like a yeah. saturday deal and so you could scale it down it's, that's going to be a, a 500 person type thing that's a little open yeah track right there it's all it's nice space nice. yeah and we wouldn't even have to worry with the backside. We just go there. But if you're going to have a mega concert, you're going to do fourth best. It's going to be huge. Right. By putting it there, we can accommodate people. We can accommodate the vehicles, and we can accommodate the fireworks with the clean air without having to make people move. You know, where it was before, we would it would be an issue having to move people away from the clear zone for the fireworks. With this scenario, albeit it's probably not perfect, but but it, it covers all the bases so we can have the biggest event that we possibly can on that track of land. And I, I think it's to your point about the stage maybe being, being used in the open area there. That's the concept right now is like a movable uh, stage, temporary stage that could be rolled in. And Correct. Where you right. can make that work. And Bates, Ken, Ken has mm -hmm. stage people that set up the one that, that we all use for the other mm -hmm. events. So we'd probably mm -hmm. just use that same. Right. We just want to make sure they, We'll run condos to get power there and that sort of thing that um and some water. How many cars roughly during Fourth Fest? We clock. We probably talk part uh twenty six hundred to three thousand cars. Wow. wow. That many? Yeah. That's what it was laid out pretty much for about 1500 on the south and about right, 1300 so on the south. Spots. <laughs> I'm not even going to put a dent in it. Well, yeah. But, but that, yeah, but this is, this is just for the normal. Oh, no, I know. That's a yeah, you've got, you, you just a hundred golf carts. Probably a thousand up in the field. Wouldn't you think? Yeah. yeah. And then we have everything across the street. Mm -hmm. Since press four lanes, so you can always take up one lane. <laughs> sure. Can you love that? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'd love that. I'd love that. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Sorry, Julian. Yeah. Um, are we looking to rent out the stage at all for any concerts to want to on a traveling tour rent out the concert and use the park for that? Or do we want to keep it strictly for the city only? Uh, the stage, we wouldn't be building a stage at this point in time. It would be like, um. The event people that brought in the music last time they bring in their own stage and set up their stage as part of their situation, but it could be a place that if somebody's coming in. And they have a event going on, they bring their stage in, they can set it up. At least I'll have a place to plug in for power and water and stuff like that. Okay, so, uh, not, so, uh, so sorry, sorry, go ahead, Councilman. I was thinking of something like Sunset Cove, how they have the park set up and they have the venues come through for the concerts, but we're not going to do anything to that scale, is what you're saying. At this point in time, no. Okay. I think the could we, goal is to have could, it. Could we, have we yes. I mean, I'm not, I'm not opposed to like a, I think we touched on this briefly, but I'm not opposed to like a all in one company, say like an Oktoberfest, like this is a company that puts on Oktoberfest. They do everything. Right? Right. They have the staff, they have the volunteers, they do it all. They come in, obviously it's for profit for them, but at the same time, they bring in a great event that's at zero cost to the city. It's not something that our taxpayers are paying for. But it's a great event, all in one situation, um, and then they clean up, they move on. So I'm not at all opposed to to using our venue space to allow events like that if they bring in great events, and it doesn't cost our taxpayers anything, and, and you know they still get the benefit of having a wonderful event in the city. Mm -hmm. Toberfest is just an example, but there's other right. other stuff. So I mean, if we have the space in the venue, we get to bring value to our our residents, then I, I'm not opposed to it whatsoever, as long as it can be properly insured. And, and well, and that's that's safe. part of our discussion why we're trying to set it up where it's pretty flexible. So if somebody came in like that, they could set up on the west side, they could set up on the south side, they could set up in different places without much problem. Great. Thank you. I think this scenario I can see having a headliner type concert come Absolutely. at some point and you could have a handful of trolleys. We could park people in multiple areas, remote parking, and bring people in. Uh -huh. But we would have enough infield where there's nothing out here in the western communities that would accommodate something right. like 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 people. You could put them in this infield. That you could have that size. And, and if we keep it flexible and open, then, then that's something no one else can do. Right. And if we did something like that, you know, perhaps we could partner with. With Seminole Ridge and do like a circuit circulator, you know, bring it in for just the event mm -hmm. and they'll have those little oh, and trolley golf carts bringing people just back and forth. Back we and can, forth. we can, you know, um, team up with Christ Fellowship. They've got over 800 spaces. Uh, there's some other things that are in the works for south of there, which would have a large parking lot as well. Right. So there's another probably five, 600 spaces, um, spaces at Christ. At, uh, High school, plus we can run up further. Okay. Excellent. Great. And we do have the couple pavilions that they're kind of we located them closer to the parking area for the pavilions for like rental out, but also in the community center. That ultimate concept would be for space that could be rented out. A portion of that community center could be rented it from time to time by people as well. For events. Very good. I think the other people in yeah. our space would be good. Have that option. And one of the concepts that uh, we are re required as part of the overall development order that was originally done is to have a park and ride lot. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is we have it designed <clears throat> so that the area where the food truck lot is becomes the park and ride pickup area. Okay. During a week. When it's a, yeah, I see the shelter so that they can come in off the north entrance, come through and go out on the south entrance, and vice versa. If they're coming north, they can come in the south and come out at the north. So it's park and ride when it's not an event, exactly. Hey, hey parking lot is just typically just Monday, to it's Friday. Monday to Friday, correct? So it shouldn't, shouldn't interfere with any events that we would have unless it's a holiday, right? But 
we've already got the space for it. So perfect. Excellent. Are there any other ideas or concepts that uh, anybody thinks we've missed? Are you online? <laughs> yes, I'm here. Do you have anything to add to? I mean, does this this get you what you need, right? So we can drill down the numbers on getting it drained. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this basically allows us now to, you know, move forward with the, uh, you know, filling in and, and uh, rerouting the county drainage um, into our relocating system and, you know, kind of start planning not only for phase one, but all the future phases that are uh, taking place within the park and kind of planning for that ahead of time so that uh, everything's set up for all future phases from a development standpoint. Let's let's make sure we anticipate getting sleeves in the ground and conduit in the ground. Oh, one hundred percent. Because you know, eventually we might want light. You know, night pickleball. We might want lights on the tennis court to do tournaments. Sure. Down right Lighting there. in general. We've we've had discussions on that, and part of it is like uh, running the conduit with hand with hand holes like along the north side so that mm -hmm. then later if you need lights on your fields you can come down between the fields there's nothing there you can drop in the conduit put the light poles in when you come in but in the meantime you've got the initial backbone and it will all be installed up front how many uh how many ducks would this loop accommodate 20 18 to 20. the foot goes nice it's about nice. So, but as to answer your question, if we had some vents, what I'm gonna call tent vendors, you know, they've got the right, they off, can just plug we, in. They, we could, we could, they could sit up in the infield area up here. I don't see where that would be an issue. You did it mm -hmm. up here. Yeah. So you could have the flexibility to serve everyone. And there's, there's 200 golf cart spots I like that. It, it's amazing how many were at our event up here during. Yeah, 190, almost 200. So we were sitting there and you're thinking about trying to find dollars. This phase, what we're what theoretically we're thinking phase one would be doing the first few fields right here. Mm -hmm. After we're calling phase one is gonna get this thing leveled, right? Right. Get some yard greens in, get some stuff in. But um Ken's Ken's thought would be, and I think it's absolutely correct. We pave the two entrances, right? We do the roundabouts. We do everything in between. Mm -hmm. So you have you can you can have the, the food trucks. You can have all of that piece. Um, we could put in a little restroom. I was going to say any possibility of the restrooms in phase yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So important. we put in a put in a lift station. We and we're just we're ballparking it, but we we have some fresh numbers from what we're done over here. That phase one for this and this piece, Zane would probably know better, but was somewhere between five and six million to, to do that piece based on what we're seeing for asphalt over here right. the lift station the piping but keeping it compact like that but then it'd be easy to tag on to in the future right. you know, to, to extend in both directions um but like i said that top lot um what were you, the one you had designed you said well I'm right sure. at a million dollars one yeah and they have a turn, these companies come in as a turnkey. I mean, that's what right. they do, right? They build these top lots. And so, you know, they take into consideration the shady, this and that, but there's a lot more money on that kind of stuff than I was originally thinking. Mm -hmm. in the but, but if it adds up quick, so oh, yeah. maybe, you know, some of y'all were talking about, um, on the state, if there's some dollars, in the or something, there is. It gives you an idea of the scope of what we're going to be. Well, that's what we need is we need something to right. because that's what, what we haven't had. We keep missing legislative session to yeah. ask for, for appropriations because we haven't had something to present yet. So and, if we can have something that I could present, I can potentially bring some money home. And if everybody you know, the, good with the basic do. design, we can get the numbers to you. We can go out and look for the dollars. And since we're doing this, Ryan and them can draw this up. This whole centerpiece, what we're going to call phase one, we can figure phase. Maybe we need to tailor it back or forward, but then Ryan can put some engineer dollars to it, and then you'd have something. Here's what we're wanting to do, and here's 
what the dollars are. Doing. Yeah, there's certainly grants, but in a bit of, you know, when it comes to appropriations, a lot of them are going to be looking for. But from us as well, right, right now, we have to be able to yeah. show them we have skin in the game. Actually, I'll bring that up in the next meeting, but um, if, I'm not sure if it's possible because the delegation meetings start in October and November, and, and then there's, um, and they're not occurring in December because I think we're the committees. But if we can have something tangible with numbers in October, we can do that because a right. lot of legislative stuff is done before the end of the session. Ryan, um, could you put together phase one? We could get together to talk weeks. about tomorrow. Yes, sir. I mean, us being a new city, new infrastructure, and a new design of a park that we can tap into something that the state might say, well, this is really innovative, thoughtful. We can, mm -hmm. you know, and help out a new city that's you know, starting up and, mm -hmm. and creating a new park, their own first that. park. And I bet, I bet Don would do it to get this colorized since we're all somewhat in agreement to get like the, um, the other ones further back. Right, get a little more color put on it. Okay. Um, as far as the initial infrastructure in phase one, is that a 50 50 SID Westlake or is that SID? I think it'd be all city would be nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's wherever we can find yeah, them. Right? It's city. <laughs> Just said city. <laughs> I think it's where we get the dollars. I mean, it's going to be. It's all hands on deck. It's, you know, SID doesn't have the extra cash flow. We'd have to float a bond or something. Which Sid can float upon easier. Do that. Sid Sid has the ability to float easier, but again, all bond payments end up coming out of the residents. So the more we can find in grants and other funding sources, the better off we are. And what was ARPA seven and change? Yes. ARPA funds. Yes. That's already been. That'll be that'll be taken up. Already? Pardon. That's been conveyed over to you guys. Has not been, been conveyed. The final documents are being finished with the attorneys. But that'll basically just about cover getting that lake filled in and the storm drainage. It's the storm drainage that we have now. The visual part. It's actually it's actually a lot more significant than you think. I mean, getting getting the drainage organized is a big deal. Absolutely. I mean, that's it. Once we can drain, then we can do whatever we can. Because even in even in the meantime, if we get the field level to the point where it drains and doesn't puddle, um, and does better than the last. The existing place we've been holding forth fest at least we have a large open field that can be utilized we have ingress and egress to it we can park cars we can have the event yes it'll be on a basically unimproved field area which is where we were before so but it's not having to worry about has the main landowner already contracted with somebody to start doing something else on that before we have the event so we have that space for the event to be utilized. Yeah, right now it's not even usable. Yeah, you know? right. So just making it brain and usable would be great. Open up, let people ride in there. Um, any thoughts or ideas having a small dog park um, where it's just grass and just a fence around it and maybe a little shade area? Yeah, I mean, that, it doesn't have to be anything vast like the Minto one, but uh, Something that while people may be bringing their family members to go play pickleball or something, volleyball, they can bring the pet with them and bring it to the park. Well, that was part of our thought with um, having this is for keeping them off the field, but a place for people to play with their dogs. Like, you know, okay. those ball frizz. But to your point, if you have parents and they've got little little dogs and all that, having a little square in, a little thing. spot in here for a dog park, you know, it doesn't have to be four foot. Yeah, yeah, just have a four foot fence thing. and. Yeah, just a thought. I wasn't sure if you had to discuss. It's not going to change the dollar no, but, much. But if we have perfect location. So we'll pencil it in a little dog park, maybe off to where the future racquetball courts are. North, north, uh, west of the town basketball. So that's an act of actual leadership. But we've got two uh, concepts here: one point two Alpha and one point two Bravo. What's the actual differences between the two concepts? A berm. On the west side, one berm flows in front of what the stage project proposed stage is going to be, and the other one is um, no oh, berm in front of it. I think that's is there a fan favorite. Is there one that we like more? No berm. Berm in front. We yeah, like because if that's we're going to be, if that becomes the mainstay, once you move that dirt in there, if that becomes the mainstay of where it's going to be set up, then it kind of blocks that area off a little bit. It, it makes it. Okay. Yeah. Is there any uh, any cons to having the berm? Anything that we're losing or, or missing out on? 
Downside? There's no downside. Well, okay. and it's, and you're talking about minor costs to some Burmese <clears throat> dirt right there. It's not a major cost difference either. All right. That's, well, if that's the case, then. What do we need? A motion, some direction? Can we just decide? Just, like a, just a consensus if, uh, if the group but is. Does more... the stage sit on top of the berm in no. that design? So no. if we go and build something permanent, then, then we'll, we'll get elevations and all. But for what the thought is, the stage that y'all use is approximately five foot to the top. Okay. We're talking about three to four foot, not to exceed five foot okay. berming. So the thought would be you bring in the stage behind it. So you're looking out, you're going to be the People's feet will be on top of the ground. I don't see. I got you. Okay. And then when people are working in the background behind the stage, they won't have the distraction because that berm will be sheltering part of it. I think. Mm -hmm. Saw it. So can we make the consensus one point two? A. Well, that a virtual. Do you have any input, um, Councilwoman Bayeron or or Councilman Martinez? In terms of A or B, are you are you in consensus? Let. We should stick with A. That seems they to might be, not be able to see B. That seems to be the fan favorite. Can you go to B? Um, I'll recognize Councilman Martinez first if you want to unmute and, mm -hmm. and give us your input. So, oh. can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What was the main difference between A and B? It's just a, a, a berm in front of the stage so that uh, while you're standing there looking at the stage, it just kind of looks like a floating stage. It's all the stuff below the stage. The ugly stuff is basically blocked by a berm. Correct. That seems to be the fan favorite. That's the only difference. I'm just trying to get a better look at it. There's only one person. We haven't even chosen the type of planning yet. You know, right, so, so it's super early. But yeah. I mean, we have two concepts. Let's get rid of one, so we're all just looking at the same thing. I think it's a good idea. Well, one A was less expensive, so right, right. Even having the burn with without burn makes no difference. It, you okay. only see it on the dollar. Okay. Well, we're gonna have we have a lot of, of what we call undesirables. Um, other souls that we don't want to build something on. It's perfect material to make the berm with. It's great for plants to grow in. So we have it. Great. Yeah. Well, it'll probably look better to have it. Yeah, I think so. So the 1.2A. Yeah, that's what I think. Well, that, way, that way when the um when the stage is not there, it's still solid. It's still a we're just uh, in an effort to keep it moving. I want to get at least the city consensus. Thank you. Uh, Charlotte, are you good with 1.2A? I'm good. Okay. okay. Yes. And is Sid good with 1.2A? Absolutely. All right. Let's give it. Councilwoman to... Pilar is also on the phone. Excellent. Do you have an opinion, uh, Councilwoman Bayeron? Keep it moving. Let's get rid of 1.2 B and stick with 1.2 A. And we'll build off of that. So we'll build if we off get of that. back together, if we want to tweak it or something, we'll, we'll use this in place. Awesome. And let's incorporate the little dog park. The dog park. Excellent. Next. Next. Anything? That's it. You got a consensus? Uh, got a consensus? So mm -hmm. Is that going to be open for rent for the surrounding cities, towns, outside? It, since it, yeah, it would be <clears throat> the original concept would be it would be a venue that could be rented by anybody. In other words, if somebody wanted to have a large birthday party or something like that, or a, a anniversary party or whatever, they could use that. Uh, one of the original concepts would was a having what would be called a catering kitchen mm -hmm. in the area. Uh, also, part of it would be so that it could be used for multiple purposes, removable walls, stuff like that, similar to what the lodge has, but not to the extent that the lodge, so you can cut things up, so have smaller areas, large areas. Um, the size of it right now is basically 7,000 square feet. Um, that's at a single story. If we do a two story, depending on what we want to put into it. Also, it would be designed to uh, 
hurricane loads of 185 as well, which would be a Cat 4 slash Cat 5 uh, event. So that would be our EOC type of thing for emergency management. Um, that's kind of where we're coming from and where we're going looking at. Okay. That's, a, that's, I mean, it, that's just the number, but it's 7,000 square feet is what Ken had come up on that. So, I mean, that can, that can get a little larger or smaller. But um, since this is a regional park and the existing, what you have down here is just going to be for residents only to use, like for a private party or something, mm -hmm. this would be good to have so that the, the general area can rent it out to your point. Um, it wouldn't have to be a resident of the city to be able to have a place to have a function like that. I think you could always it's rate to a per resident rate versus non resident. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Good. Yes, it could be, it could be. Check with the 2 attorneys, but I believe it could be different because. Um, the majority of the. Maintenance and upkeep is would be covered by assessments, which is by the residents. Of, of the district, so. There could be a differential between resident uh, leasing space and a non-resident lease sure. space. Yeah. You see that all the time, yeah. like Jupiter Civic Center, you get a discount to Jupiter right. Center and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. All right, let's run through with uh, comments. Um, so we run it. I don't think I have any comments. Just trying to absorb here. Catch up. Okay. The concept came up, but I, yeah, from our last conversation. Yeah, well, that's what she put together and then Don's group they put together just trying to keep it. Keep I, uh, Councilwoman, I mean, Councilman Martinez, any comments? I'm glad you brought up the tot lot. I spoke to Ken about it a couple months ago and he showed me some plans that look awesome. Like you said, uh, a lot of constituents in the city had brought up concern about what we have in the city or how far they have to drive for a nice park. So I think focusing on that and uh, trying to get money from the state would help improve that a lot. And what are we making the track, the multimodal path around the track? Is that, what are we making that out of the material? Same as it is throughout the whole city. It, I, believe, I believe it was scheduled to be asphalt, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it's scheduled to be asphalt. Gotcha. Okay. And are we going to do any large entrance, grand entrance trees, banyan trees, anything at the front? No, it just comes in between the, um, there will be pylon entrance signs at the entryways. Same like going into Christ fellowship or going into the public's entrance. There will be those on, on the entries. Do we have any room to add any large entrance trees? Any what? Keeps out. Uh, Someone needs to mute their device. Do we have any room to add any large entrance trees? Maybe by the roundabouts or in the roundabouts? We'll talk to landscapers and see what the budget is. Okay. Uh, besides that, no, I, everything looks great. I have another call. Um, in the lakes in the front. Is that, are those aerators you're putting in? They drew, they drew fountains in on this that it wasn't etched in stone, but we'd drawn them in just to a feature. Okay, if we go if with those, is that a SID um, controlled item that's take maintenance by SID or the SID? It would be because it needs SID. Okay. That's good for mosquitoes too, I think. It's built it's city. Not really. <laughs> Enough with Bill and the city. For the past all, Bill and the city. Like dead water's mosquitoes. I think there's something about the moving water that yeah, stops them. It stops the mosquitoes. Yeah. Oh. It helps. The mosquito fish are the, are the are the big ones. Yeah. And we did more mosquito control better. Just yeah. as yeah. go ahead, uh, Scott. To let everyone know, we um we released we did a mosquito fish release three years ago. We were having a lot of issues and we did and weren't really aware that you needed to keep up to them because I thought they'd breed and just take off. But I guess the other predators out there tend to eat a lot of them. Uh, so we started having, we started having, we finally brought to our attention um, a lot of mosquitoes, blind mosquitoes, hatches. So we started uh, last night 
releasing. They did 17,000 they released last night. Uh, we're gonna do, I think it's gonna range between 100, 200, uh, 100, one to 2,000 per acre area of lake. So oh, we, we released, started in the MX area. Great. And we're gonna start working through, we're gonna do 50,000, I think, Ken. I believe so. 50,000. So we'll work it as far as it'll go. But then next year, what we're gonna do is we're just going to every year just keep small amount. around and try to keep the numbers up. And that's natural control without trying to come in and spray everybody. And uh, can you get me some kind of plan or something? I can let our residents know like that's what we're doing because they'd be really excited to hear that. Just put it out on the put it I know, on. I that. don't remember exactly what you just said. So like, it's just we're going to release fifty thousand, and we plan to do another two thousand. Like just, what are the just plans? Put it in for for midge control, mosquito control, we use mosquito fish. Uh, we install them every three years. We're going to go to a smaller amount that? every year. Yes, I'll bring oh, that too. Good, thank you. Uh, we, did, we didn't have, we didn't really have a, a, a set plan. We thought it was a one shot deal, which we did originally, but as we're finding we're going to just make it a protocol. We're just going to have, we'll put some in the budget every year. They say every year. Sid is enacting a, a mosquito control protocol that yes. be an natural to mosquito control. Be in addition yeah. to the county's yeah. Yeah. protocol. Yeah. Or, we, they, they actually look like a like the minnows. They're, 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 they're small. They just look like minnows. Okay. They eat them out of that market. It's very exciting. Thank you. Um, Councilwoman Bayeron, do you have any comments? Okay. Um, what are the supervisors? What do you got? I said plenty. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Play a lot of heat. Um, no, I'm, I'm good as well. I think this looks amazing and I think it, it um, accommodates a lot of the things that residents aren't already getting at in the amenity. Mm -hmm. um, a great example of the top lot, you know, focusing on that younger demographic because our lot is uh, for an older range. Mm -hmm. um, so that's nice. And then obviously the Sports will be huge. So that was great. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll echo those sentiments for my comments. I think the well, first and foremost, I think just the fact that we have plan mm -hmm. and we're gonna have progress and we're gonna have forward movements on you know a much, much, much needed city park is fantastic. Um pickleball is absolutely huge. I think it's the fastest growing sport in the country right now, which uh Harmonious with the fastest growing city in the county. So let's let's get that done. Um, great job to staff. Really fantastic job. It looks phenomenal, and I'm very excited. And I think that with the uh, you know top lot and certainly incorporating special needs into that is is paramount. So get us some shades over the <laughs> over the playground. And, um, let's. Try and hit the ground running as as much as we can to actually get this done. Let's go ahead and open for public comment. Mayor, I received no public comment cards prior to the meeting. However, I will give the virtual audience a moment to to raise their virtual hand or unmute their device, stating their name and address. If you are a caller that has been muted, you may press star six to speak. Please state your name and address. If you wish to make a comment, please raise your virtual hand or unmute your device by pressing star six and state your name and address. You have three minutes. May we have no comments. Does the audience have any comments for I adjourn? I mean, Scott and Ken, when you guys are working with the, in the team, um, if you can have the, the full concept and then break down phase one for us with that concept. Yep, yep. So we can go and fight for phase one right now. Exactly. Maybe, maybe mid October we could have that. Maybe we'll do a color. Maybe we'll do a, a color depiction of, of what phase, phase one. one. The phases. And then the options that you have broken down monetary wise where we can say we want a lot to. We can do that. 
because our sister cities did very well this year locally. Mm -hmm. We may be a part of that too. We're not getting funding. Missing the, uh, All right, I'm going to adjourn at 5 16 p.m. Thank you. Now, what are the chances of starting the budget meeting early? You can't. It's been advertised. Something.